Hey everyone, this is part four of the uh, project number one. And uh, last time we um, we set up a server, we set up a workstation, and now we're ready to join the workstation to the server. So here we have the server. Now, let's see if the workstation, a Windows 10 machine can actually ping or find the server. So remember, we can use our um, uh, our command prompt, which is uh, actually Windows doesn't have a command prompt anymore. Uh, it's all using uh, PowerShell, which uh, you can also find over here by just typing power and you can see it, Windows PowerShell. You might recall that the server is uh, 192.168.1.100 1 so if I say ping 192.168.1.100 and I get a reply back saying yes I can so the workstation can see the server right the workstation can go to the server but the server also must be able to see the workstation so let's see if the server can actually see the workstation we are at the server now and uh, in here we can also type in power for PowerShell and we can open up our PowerShell command prompt here and uh, similarly our workstation was let's say ping uh, 192.168.1. Dot what was our workstation name number 101 as you recall okay and it appears that it times out so the server cannot talk to the workstation so that means that the workstation is blocking things through its firewall okay so Windows 10 out of the box comes out configure uh, pretty secure so what we need to do is we need to enable communication between the workstation and the server. So let's go over here to our network icon, right click, open network settings. And uh, actually, we just need to go to security. So just type security. We're going to have to go to the firewall here. Let's see, security. So we'll go to Windows Security Settings and uh, let's go to Firewall and Network Protection and let's go to the Domain Network and let's see, actually, let's uh, do this, let's uh, go to Advanced Settings click yes and in advanced settings we can say uh, we can check out our inbound rules for example okay and this is what's allowed to come into the workstation so anything that is active will have this green uh, active uh, arrow so what we're looking for here is to enable something called SMB which is right here, SMB. But I'm just gonna grab all of these. So I'll just hit the shift key. Anything that's file and print sharing using the uh, SMB protocol. And SMB is server message block. It's a network protocol used by Windows-based computer that allows systems within the same network to share files, it allows computers connected to the same network or domain, which is what we want to do, to access files from other local computers as easily as they were on the computer's local hard drive. Okay, So this is why we need to establish SMB communication between the server and the workstation. SMB uses a couple of ports and it uses port 139 this communicates with the NetBIOS, which is the local computer name. 
and it's a local network used to communicate within the same switch or the same network. SMB also works over port 445 using the TCP protocol so it allows you to communicate to other computers over the internet via port 445 SMB. Okay, so it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea what this is here. All right, so going back over here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say enable rule. So I highlighted all of them. I'll enable the rule and all of them became active. Okay, that's for my inbound rules. And now let's go back to our PowerShell on the server and see if the server can actually talk to this workstation. So we're at the server again. All I have to do is hit the up arrow key on the keyboard and it remembers the last thing that I typed. So now if I hit enter, you can see that the server now has communication, right? It got a reply back from the workstation. So now the server and the workstation are talking to each other. All right. Okay, so now what we need to do is join the domain. Go back to the workstation. Now that we have communication, to join a domain, you basically can do it a few, a few ways, but the easiest way is to open the Explorer, right-click this PC, properties and right here where we changed our computer name you can also change to join a domain so just click change and uh, you can rename a computer here or change the domain right so I'm gonna say change and my domain, if you recall, the domain name that I chose when I was setting it up, it was called Walter. So I'm going to click OK. The username for the, the, the domain is administrator. And the password was our CSULB 1949 with a capital C. CSULB 1949. So now the workstation, this Windows 10 machine, is going out to the server and saying, hey, I want to join you so that I can access resources over the network. Okay, and hopefully it will find the domain name just by Walter. If not, uh, we may have to put in the full uh, domain name. Let's see what it does here. There we go. Welcome to the Walter domain. Okay. So what this, this is going to have to reboot the workstation. You can hit close, restart. So what this means now that the computer has joined the domain, what it means is that our server can manage that computer in several ways. We can go to tools. And we can say Active Directory, Domains, let's see, <coughs> Active Directory, Users and Computers. Click on that. Okay. If you click on Computers, so this is a database of all the users, all the groups, all the security groups, and all the computers that are in your domain, right? Our Windows 10 computer that we just joined now is part of our computers group. If you're in a big company, you can set up folders for different uh, places around the company. And um, you can just move, just drag and drop them to different folders so that you can organize them better. So to give you an idea, the university has like 7,000 computers. So there's folders for each department and each department has uh, areas where you can drag, you know, drag and drop the computers that belong to your uh, to your department. These are called organizational units or OUs, right? So you can create whatever you want in here. 
Now, if you had multiple domain controllers, you can manage them through here, but we only have one, okay? So this is the um, uh, domain, uh, domain controller in here. You can see here that my domain is called Walter and my server name is called server1, okay? The computer that joined this is called Windows 10. We just called it, that's the name of the computer that we did. And over here, you can create users. The users are going to be allowed to access files in this server. So right now I don't have any users. So why don't we create a user? All you have to do is right click in here and say new user. And I'm just gonna name it user one. And user one will be my first user of that domain okay just give it the same password csulb 1949 capital c csulb 1949 you can have the user change the password at the next logon or you can just say user cannot change the password and the password never expires click next and next so now you have user one who can actually go in and log on to the domain over here so this is user one you can also create organizational units underneath here and organize your users if you like for large companies you'll have a whole bunch of organizational units or folders that that are basically divided into the, the areas all right, so we have our first user. We have a computer that was joined. Why don't we log on to the, to the domain using the computer that we just joined. Here's my Windows 10 machine. You're gonna notice something different. Now that you log on, it's asking you for a password, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna say other user, because this Walter is my local user. I wanna say, other user let's see how do I sign into a domain so what you do is you can type the domain name backslash the user name and then a password so the domain name was Walter the user that I created was user1 and my password is CSULB 1949. CS, CSULB 1949. This is the first time that I'm logging in this way onto this computer. So it might take a little bit of time to create the profile inside the computer, the workstation. Okay, and this is how a lot of organizations work, right? You have your Windows machines. You have a central server where you can control all the computers that are in there. You can control all the users and the groups that are in there as well. Okay. And this way, uh, you can uh, you can do many things like uh, uh, have control of their passwords, where you can you know reset their access to. Uh, to chairs and things like that okay so while while this uh, profile gets created oh it already did that's really fast okay so now that I belong to the domain we can create um, uh, some chairs on the server so that we can actually map them over here and access them so why don't we do that let's um, Let's go to the server. Let's create a group. Right click on users and say new group. And let's call this group shares. It's a security group. It's a global group. Okay. And uh, we can actually add a user to the chairs group so now that the chairs group has been created double click it 
go to members click add and uh, in here you're going to be looking for that user one or you can just type it check the name user one was found I'll click OK and I'll click apply and so now I have a folder uh, uh, a user group called shares user one belongs to it now I'm going to create a chair folder okay I go to the computer here and I'm going to say new folder and I'll just call it share in the chair folder I'm going to create uh, the chair folders that I want to do for example double click it delete this file here need that. I'm gonna say new folder documents I'm gonna say here for example new folder uh, photos for example So you create the folders that you would like to share inside that one share here. And what you do is uh, we're going to share the folders inside there. So the top level, for example, you can look at it and you can see that uh, as you go to security, let's see, you can say edit add type everyone and give full control to everyone okay and that's going to be the top level now on the document side I'm going to say new document I'll just create a test test doc And I'm going to right click on the documents folder and I'm going to say give access to, you can pick specific people or groups. So on this one, it has everyone read and write, but uh, I want to give full control to another group uh, that shares group. I want them also to have read and write. Okay, and you can right click on properties and let's look at the overall securities. You go to security tab, go to advance, and uh, we can see that the chairs has full control and uh, is not inherited from the top level, which is fine. And uh, we can see here that everyone has full control at the top level. But you can also change it and give less and less permissions to the, to the ones that you want. So if you click on that one and you click edit, you can disable the ability to read and write and just give them what you want. All right. so we shared the top level we went into the folder that we want to share and uh, let's see folder network file and folder sharing documents share okay so let's uh, see if we can access this folder remotely let's go to the workstation open your windows explorer and there's a way to map the network so for example right click on their network here and you can say map and we're gonna have to pick the Z drive and it tells you the format so backslash backslash server one backslash I believe it's called chair yep it's called chair and then we're gonna say finish Okay, and so now we have something called the Z drive here. 
which I'm looking at the chair on server 1 in my Windows 10 computer. We can go to documents and we can see that there's a test document in there. If I right click on here and I say new text, and I'll just call this one hi. It allows me to create a document in here. And so now if somebody has another computer and they're mapping the Z drive, they can see the file also, uh, no matter where they are in the company. Okay, so we can come here and we can actually type something inside there. And we can save it. You can also go to test doc. And I can make some edits to it. We can also save it. So that's how you do it. This is how you basically share a file on the server. Okay, the top level folder you give access to everybody. And then you create the subfolders and this is where you're going to control the permissions for the users in the subfolders. The server is already sharing it, right? You are at the Windows 10 computer here and you were able to access it by Internet Explorer or Windows Explorer, right click, map network drive. It tells you the format. And, uh, and that's how you do this share, file sharing. One of the other requirements on the lab is to uh, be able to remote desktop or remote into the server from the Windows 10 machine. So you'll take your Windows 10 machine and you'll be able to remote into the server as if you were on the server. So we're going to allow it. So all you have to do is on the server, click on the File Explorer here, Windows Explorer. You can go to this PC, right click on it, and you can go to Properties. You can go to Remote Settings. And you can say Allow Connections to this computer. Okay, Allow Connections only from computers running remote desktop with network authentication. Recommended. That's fine. Click Selected Users. By default, the administrator has access, but you can also allow other users. But let's just use the administrator right now. And remember that it's the computer, uh, the, the domain, and the user administrator into the IP address of this server. So let's just click OK, click Apply, and now this machine, uh, it, the administrator is allowed to remote desktop into it. So let's go to the workstation. And let's type remote. And we have this remote desktop here. And let's put in the IP address of the server, which is 192.168.1.1. That's our server. Under show options, our username is going to be the domain name, which is Walter backslash administrator. Okay, the administrator of Walter of that particular domain has access to it. And I can allow me to save the credentials. You can say save. And it should remember next time. There are other things you can do here. You can um, set the quality of the, the display, for example. You can uh, map the audio of the server, right, or the keyboard. You can do a few other things, but those are the basic ones. It's basically the ability to go into the server from your workstation. So if I click connect, you can see that it's asking me for the credentials and that's that CSULB 1949. And hopefully the uh, server by default has the port uh, allowed to connect. 
So secure and remote connection. And let's see what happens. Okay, this is just a certificate. You can say don't ask again. And yes, go ahead and put the certificate in my workstation. Okay, so this is pretty interesting. We're communicating between desktop computer and the server. We're trying to remote control the server. This is a little bit unusually slow, but uh, you know, again, I'm using so much resources out of my laptop here. And there we go. I am connected to the Windows server from my Windows 10 computer. And so things that I can do now is I can manage the server remotely from my desktop computer in my office. So if you have the server located in another office or a server room and you have your desktop Windows 10 on your in your office, you can remote to the server and control it. So let's say somebody says, hey, can you add a new user? You can say, yeah. So you remote desktop into the server, right? We go to tools. We go over here to Active Directory users and computers. And you can right click on users and say new user. And this is going to be user 2. Let's call it user 2. Give it a password. You can let the user change it when they log on for the first time. And just give the same password. CSULB 1949. CSULB 1949. So now you just created another user that is allowed to log on to the domain if they have their own computers and things like that. So it's pretty neat. I can manage everything here on the server remotely. Now what happened to the screen on the server? Well, you're going to see that it's locked. So if you go to the server, it's actually locked. And I can unlock it from here and then it will kick me out from, the, from here or I can log off from here and uh, basically the session will be restored over there. I can also do things from here like reboot the server. I can disconnect from here, right? So I can do pretty much everything. So let's see, let's shut down the server remotely. Okay. If I go to my server here, you can see that it's shutting down and it shut down. Okay, so back to my workstation and the server is shut down. Anyways, these are the, the neat things.